Welcome back, everyone. In today's episode of Duty and Valor, you'll hear the remarkable story of U.S. Army Colonel David Hackworth, a man whose name is synonymous with leadership and valor. From his enlistment at the age of 15 to becoming one of the most decorated soldiers in U.S. history, Colonel Hackworth's journey is nothing short of legendary. His fearless service in the Korean and Vietnam Wars earned him numerous accolades. But it was his relentless pursuit of military reform and advocacy for soldiers' welfare that truly set him apart. David was born in Ocean Park, California to parents Lorette and Leroy Hackworth on November 11, 1930. Tragically, before he was a year old, both of his parents died, leaving behind three young children. David and his two siblings were raised by their grandmother, and their family was poor but did whatever they could to survive the Great Depression. In addition to relying on government assistance, David helped support the family by taking odd jobs including shining the shoes of soldiers stationed in the area. In 1944, with World War II raging, David sought some adventure. He reportedly paid a transient to pose as his father who claimed David was of age, allowing him to join the U.S. Merchant Marine. He served in the South Pacific in the waning months of the war before returning to the U.S. In 1946, he decided to join the Army. He was still too young to enlist, but this time he didn't need to hire a transient to fool the recruiters. Rather, he was able to use his Merchant Marine paperwork to prove his age. After training, he was sent to Northeast Italy as part of the occupation following the war. There, he was a rifleman with the 351st Infantry Regiment, 88th Infantry Division, but they were under the command of the British, which was something that David despised. He would later say that American units should never be under operational control of foreign forces. In 1950, when the Korean War started, David was now a sergeant. He deployed to the Korean Peninsula with the 35th Recon Company, 27th Infantry Regiment, 25th Infantry Division. On February 6, 1951, Sergeant Hackworth was leading a task force when they encountered heavy small arms and mortar fire. After positioning his men, he mounted a tank and directed fire at the enemy emplacements. After he ran out of ammunition, he ran to and climbed on another tank and directed its guns to fire at the enemy. His actions weren't going unnoticed and the enemy was directing their fire directly at Sergeant Hackworth. Though severely wounded, he continued leading his men. For this unbelievable act of valor, he was awarded his first Silver Star. Not long after, Sergeant Hackworth was credited in large part to the success of a raid on Hill 1062 and received a battlefield promotion to first lieutenant. On August 8th, Lieutenant Hackworth was leading a patrol against well-defended enemy positions when they faced a heavy barrage of small arms and automatic weapon fire. He knew that they were not in the position to eliminate the hostile threat. He moved from cover and directed tanks and half-tracks to better positions and directed their fire. He then moved to the front and led the infantry in a grenade and bayonet assault on the enemy. Though this assault initially displaced the enemy and forced them into a hasty retreat, they were soon able to mount a counterattack, spurred by the sheer force and numbers. The patrol was forced to withdraw from their position, and Lt. Hackworth manned a machine gun to provide supporting fire until the last man reached safety. For this, he was awarded his second Silver Star. On November 4th, he again distinguished himself in combat. Lieutenant Hackworth was leading an assault squad up a steep hill in an attempt to dislodge a well-entrenched enemy. Moving up the hill, they faced grenades, small arms, and automatic weapons fire. During the assault, Lieutenant Hackworth was hit and broke his arm, but he refused to be evacuated. He continued to direct his men until his wounds forced him to receive medical care. He wasn't gone long before he returned and led a charge that routed the enemy and gained the American forces the hill. As he couldn't hold his carbine due to his broken arm, a soldier held it level for Lt. Hackworth, and he laid down heavy fire on the retreating enemy. Even though he was badly injured, he continued to expose himself to enemy fire to ensure wounded soldiers were evacuated safely. For his leadership in combat that day, he was awarded his third Silver Star. Prior to the end of armed conflict in Korea, Hackworth was promoted to captain, the youngest of the war. After the war, Captain Hackworth left the army to pursue a college degree, 
but after two years he had enough of civilian life and returned to the army in 1956. When it was announced that the U.S. was sending a large advisory team to South Vietnam, Captain Hackworth volunteered to go. He was denied and was told that he had too much combat experience, and the Army wanted those with little or no combat experience to go instead. By 1965, Hackworth was a major and finally got the chance to serve in Vietnam. He was part of the 101st Airborne and founded a platoon designated Tiger Force. Their goal was to out-guerrilla the guerrillas, a strategy that Hackworth later wrote about. The unit was tasked with long-range recon missions and were recognized with the Presidential Unit Citation. On February 7, 1966, Major Hackworth and his unit were tasked with relieving soldiers who had been pinned down by enemy fire for over four hours. As they neared the friendly forces, their progress was halted by enemy fire. Major Hackworth set off alone on a recon mission of the area. He crossed an open field and then over a bridge while being targeted by enemy fire. On the other side of the bridge was another field. He ran across it while being shot at to connect with the embattled men. He then crawled to within 20 meters of the enemy to pinpoint all enemy positions and gauge their strength. He then returned and led an attack on the first position which they cleared. They then faced even more intense fire as they assaulted another position, just 40 meters from the enemy's main line. Over the next six hours, the men were subjected to continuous fire, but that didn't stop Major Hackworth from effectively leading his men on assaults on the entrenched enemy. He repeatedly exposed himself to enemy fire to inspire his men forward. When one unit's attack failed, he personally led the attack forward. Later in the battle, he once again exposed himself to heavy enemy fire and called in an airstrike on enemy positions, which ended this engagement. The next month, on March 4, 1966, Major Hackworth was directing his men in battle from a command and control helicopter before telling the pilot to bring him down into the combat zone. He faced heavy machine gun fire as he directed his men in an assault on the machine gun emplacements. He then raced to a platoon that had suffered heavy casualties among its officers. He moved from squad to squad and rallied the disorganized platoon. He also redistributed ammunition, rendered first aid, and coordinated the evacuation of the injured. After an aborted rescue attempt, Major Hackworth stood in an exposed rice paddy in complete darkness, using his flashlight to guide the landing of ten helicopters. For this, he was again awarded a Silver Star. Hackworth was then assigned to the Pentagon and was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. His time serving at the Pentagon gave Colonel Hackworth a differing view of the Vietnam War. He felt it was a war that the U.S. couldn't win, which was an unpopular thought among his peers. He refused calls to resign as he saw himself as an officer with the duty to fight a campaign to the best of his ability, whether he agreed with it or not. In 1971, Hackworth was promoted to Colonel. This was around the same time that Colonel Hackworth sat for an interview with ABC, where he strongly criticized Army leadership and the war itself. He said that the U.S. should fully withdraw this obviously angered army leadership and he was forced to retire. The anger directed at Colonel Hackworth led to an investigation of his time in Vietnam, where he faced multiple accusations of wrongdoing. Colonel Hackworth avoided the officers investigating him, and after some time, the investigation ended with no charges being filed. After retiring, he left for Australia, where he found success with a popular restaurant and duck farm, as well as investing in real estate. In the mid-80s, he returned to the U.S. and began his writing career. Later on, Hackworth wrote a controversial Newsweek article series about Navy Admiral Jeremy Borda and his supposed unearned valor pins. The shame brought upon him by this article was largely credited with Admiral Borda committing suicide. In retaliation, Colonel Hackworth was subjected to a review of his own medals, including the nine silver stars he claimed to have been awarded. The findings of that review showed that he wasn't awarded nine silver stars. Rather, he was unaware that he was actually awarded a total of ten silver stars, three during the Korean War and seven during Vietnam. During his time in the Army, Colonel Hackworth was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross twice, the Silver Star ten times, the Legion of Merit four times, a Distinguished Flying Cross, the Bronze Star eight times, and the Purple Heart eight times, among many awards 
making him one of the most highly decorated soldiers in U.S. history. On May 4, 2005, Colonel David Hackworth died in Tijuana, Mexico, and he is buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Colonel David Hackworth embodied the essence of courage and tenacity. His fierce advocacy for military reform, even in the face of intense criticism, showcased his relentless pursuit of excellence and integrity. He never shied away from challenging the status quo, always striving to improve the lives and effectiveness of his fellow soldiers. I couldn't cover every action that led to Colonel Hackworth being awarded his medals, but I'm hoping that you can take the time to learn more about him, as his story is an amazing one. Thank you for listening to this episode of Duty and Valor. To read more about this week's hero, check out the sources used in today's episode in our show notes and at dutyandvalor.com. If you want to listen to our episodes early, we release new episodes on our YouTube channel of the same name on Fridays at 5 p.m. Also on our channel, we release daily YouTube shorts that highlight our nation's heroes, most of whom haven't been featured on our show yet. Be sure to like, follow, and share our episodes. And please join us for our next episode where we'll be sharing the inspiring story of another American hero who served with pride and lived with humility.